In this video, we will embark on a detailed exploration of the inner ear's anatomy. We will begin with an overview of the inner ear, highlighting its location and general structure. Our exploration will include a detailed examination of the bony labyrinth, delving into its integral structures, the vestibule, the semicircular canals, and the cochlea. We will also focus on the membranous labyrinth, which is encased within the bony labyrinth and contains endolymph, a fluid crucial to the ear's function. The discussion will extend to the fluid systems of the inner ear, specifically the perilymph and endolymph, elucidating their roles in hearing and balance. Further, we'll delve into the intricacies of the internal auditory canal, a key pathway for nerve and blood supply to the inner ear. This segment will include an in-depth look at the vascularization and innervation of the inner ear. To conclude, we will summarize the key functions and components of the inner ear, emphasizing its importance in our daily lives. The inner ear, an intricate and essential component of the auditory and vestibular systems, is the innermost part of the ear. Encased within the dense petrous part of the temporal bone, it plays a crucial role in both hearing and balance. Situated strategically between the middle ear laterally and the internal auditory canal medially, the inner ear is well protected yet perfectly positioned to perform its functions. The architecture of the inner ear is divided into two primary components, the bony labyrinth and the membranous labyrinth. The bony labyrinth acts as a rigid, protective framework. It is a complex system of channels and cavities carved into the temporal bone, which houses and safeguards the more delicate membranous labyrinth. Within the bony labyrinth resides the membranous labyrinth, a series of sacs and tubes that conform closely to the shape of the bony labyrinth but are separate from it. This membranous structure is filled with a fluid called endolymph and contains the sensory receptors for both hearing and balance. The space between the bony and membranous labyrinths is filled with perilymph, a fluid that plays a key role in the transmission of sound waves within the ear. The perilymph in the bony labyrinth transmits vibrations from the middle ear to the membranous labyrinth. The bony labyrinth, an integral component of the inner ear, is a meticulously structured system of rigid channels and cavities situated within the petrous part of the temporal bone. This intricate formation serves as the outer wall of the inner ear and provides a protective framework for the delicate structures it encases. Comprising three main structures, the bony labyrinth is a marvel of anatomical design. The first of these structures is the vestibule, which is the central part of the labyrinth. The vestibule acts as the entryway to the other components of the inner ear and contains two important sacs, the utricle and the saccule. These sacs are part of the membranous labyrinth and play a crucial role in the vestibular system, contributing to the body's sense of balance and spatial orientation. The second key structure of the bony labyrinth is the three semicircular canals. These canals are positioned at right angles to each other and are named according to their orientation, the lateral, superior, and posterior semicircular canals. Lastly, the cochlea is a spiral-shaped cavity resembling a snail shell. It is the hearing organ of the inner ear, where sound vibrations are transformed into neural signals. The vestibule, a central element within the bony labyrinth of the inner ear, plays a pivotal role in the auditory and vestibular systems. Characterized by its six distinct walls, each housing specific anatomical features, the vestibule is a hub where key structures of hearing and balance converge. On the anterior wall of the vestibule, there is a notable opening into the cochlea, known as the cochlear window or fenestra cochlei. This opening is crucial as it marks the boundary between the vestibule and the cochlea. The posterior wall of the vestibule is distinguished by the presence of five openings that lead to the semicircular canals. The openings allow for the passage of endolymph between the vestibule and the semicircular canals. The superior wall, or roof, of the vestibule serves an important protective function as it separates the vestibule from the cranial cavity. This separation is crucial in maintaining the isolation of the inner ear from the brain and other cranial structures, thereby protecting it from potential infections and other pathologies. Conversely, the inferior wall, or floor, of the vestibule is contiguous with the internal auditory canal. This canal is a vital pathway through which the vestibular nerve passes, carrying sensory information from the vestibule and the semicircular canals to the brain. The lateral wall of the vestibule faces the middle ear and contains the oval window or fenestra vestibuli. This window is closed by the base of the stapes, one of the auditory ossicles, and is key in transmitting sound vibrations from the middle ear into the inner ear. 
Finally, the medial wall of the vestibule features the utricle, part of the membranous labyrinth. The utricle, along with the saccule, also located in the vestibule, contains sensory receptors that contribute to the sense of balance and spatial orientation. Within the bony labyrinth of the inner ear, the semicircular canals stand as key components for maintaining balance and spatial orientation. There are three of these canals on each side of the head, each meticulously designed to detect rotational movements of the head in different planes, thus playing a crucial role in the vestibular system. The anterior or superior canal is oriented vertically and perpendicularly to the long axis of the petrous part of the temporal bone. This unique orientation allows it to detect head movements like nodding, contributing to the body's ability to sense motion and maintain equilibrium when moving forwards or backwards. Similarly, the posterior canal, also oriented vertically, runs parallel to the long axis of the petrous temporal bone. This positioning makes it sensitive to head tilts, such as those when tilting the head towards the shoulder. It works in conjunction with the superior canal to provide comprehensive sensory input for vertical head movements. In contrast, the lateral or horizontal canal, as suggested by its name, is oriented horizontally and extends laterally relative to the petrous bone. It is specifically responsive to rotations of the head around a vertical axis, such as turning the head from side to side. Each of these semicircular canals features a distinct enlargement known as the bony ampulla at one end. These ampullae contain the sensory organs crucial for detecting rotational movements. The endolymph fluid within the canal stimulates the sensory hair cells in the ampullae during head rotations, initiating the process of transmitting vestibular information to the brain. The ampullae of all three canals open independently into the vestibule of the inner ear. Additionally, the non-ampulated ends of the superior and posterior canals converge to form a common structure, known as the common bony cruise. Each semicircular canal is filled with a fluid called endolymph. As the head moves, this fluid flows within the canals, activating the hair cells in the ampullae. This mechanism allows the brain to accurately interpret and respond to various head movements, ensuring balance and spatial awareness. The cochlea, also a component of the bony labyrinth within the inner ear, is an intricate and vital structure for the sense of hearing. Resembling the shape of a snail shell, the cochlea is situated adjacent to the vestibule, perfectly positioned to receive sound vibrations and convert them into neural signals. The cochlear structure is characterized by a spiral that wraps around a central pillar of porous bone known as the modiolus. This spiral configuration is not just for compactness, it plays a crucial role in the cochlear's function. The winding of the cochlea turns approximately two and a half to two and three quarters times, forming a cone-like shape. The apex of this cone, known as the helicotrema, points anterolaterally and it is at this point that the scala vestibuli and scala tympani, the two main paralymph-filled tubes within the cochlea, converge. The cochlear spiral houses the organ of corti, the sensory organ of hearing. Each turn of the cochlea is responsible for detecting different frequencies of sound. Higher frequencies are detected at the base of the cochlea, near the oval window where the stapes connects, while lower frequencies are detected at the apex. This gradation in frequency detection along the length of the cochlea allows for the perception of a wide range of sound frequencies, contributing to the complexity of human hearing. The cochlea is intricately divided by the osseous spiral lamina, a bony ledge that projects from the modiolus, which is the cochlea's central, conical core. This division by the osseous spiral lamina is instrumental in creating the unique architecture of the cochlea, facilitating its function in sound transmission. The division created by the osseous spiral lamina results in the formation of two distinct scaly or chambers within the cochlea, the scala tympani and the scala vestibuli. The scala tympani, located in the lower portion of the cochlea, extends from the round window at the base of the cochlea to the helicotrema at the apex, where it connects with the scala vestibuli. This chamber is filled with pyrolymph. The scala vestibuli, situated in the upper portion of the cochlea, runs from the oval window, where it receives vibrations from the stapes, to the helicotrema. Like the scala tympani, it is also filled with pyrolymph and is integral to the propagation of sound waves through the cochlea. Between these two scaly lies the scala media or cochlear duct, a separate chamber that houses the organ of corti, the actual sensory organ of hearing. The membranous labyrinth, also known as the endolymphatic labyrinth, is a delicate and complex structure nestled within the bony labyrinth of the inner ear. 
This remarkable system is a continuous collection of fluid-filled tubes and sacs, each lined with a specialized conjunctivo epithelial wall. One of the key components of the membranous labyrinth is the cochlear duct, situated within the cochlea. The cochlear duct contains the organ of corti, the sensory organ responsible for converting sound vibrations into electrical impulses that the brain can interpret as sound. In addition to the cochlear duct, the membranous labyrinth includes the semicircular ducts, which are critical for the sense of balance and the utricle and saccule, two small sac-like structures in the vestibule, also integral parts of the membranous labyrinth. Contributing to our sense of balance and spatial orientation. The entire membranous labyrinth is filled with endolymph, a potassium-rich fluid that differs significantly from the pyrolymph found in the surrounding bony labyrinth. The unique composition of endolymph is vital for the proper functioning of the hair cells within the cochlear duct and the vestibular apparatus. The movement of endolymph within these structures stimulates the hair cells, initiating the conversion of mechanical stimuli into nerve impulses. The utricle and saccule, residing in the medial wall of the vestibule within the bony labyrinth, are integral components of the membranous labyrinth. These small, interconnected membranous sacs are exquisitely designed to detect gravity and linear motion thereby aiding in maintaining balance and spatial orientation. Each of these structures contains a macula, which is a specialized sensory area. The maculae are densely populated with hair cells, the sensory receptors of the vestibular system, and are covered with otoliths, tiny calcium carbonate crystals. The otoliths add mass to the gelatinous layer above the hair cells, enhancing their sensitivity to head movements. When the head moves, the otoliths shift, causing the underlying hair cells to bend and send signals to the brain about the body's position and movement. This mechanism is crucial for maintaining postural equilibrium and for perceiving linear acceleration and deceleration. The utricle, in particular, has a unique orientation and function. It is horizontally aligned with the vestibular window and is the point of entry for the semicircular canals. This positioning allows the utricle to be especially sensitive to horizontal movements, such as forward and sideways motion. Furthermore, the endolymphatic duct arises from the union of two small canals, namely the utricular and saccular ducts. These ducts originate from the medial walls of the utricle and saccule, respectively. The endolymphatic duct plays a significant role in maintaining the delicate balance of endolymph within the membranous labyrinth. The semicircular ducts, integral components of the membranous labyrinth, are strategically positioned within the semicircular canals of the osseous labyrinth. These ducts, comprising three hollow tubes each shaped like an incomplete loop, are strategically positioned to detect rotational movements of the head in three different planes, horizontal, vertical, and sagittal. Each semicircular duct opens into the vestibule at both ends, allowing for the continuous flow of endolymph, the fluid contained within these ducts. At one end of each semicircular duct is a distinct swelling known as the membranous ampulla. These ampullae house a critical sensory structure, the crista ampullaris. The crista ampullaris consists of hair cells, which are the primary sensory receptors in the vestibular system, and a gelatinous structure called the cupula. The cupula sits atop the hair cells, extending across the width of the ampulla. As these hair cells bend, they generate nerve impulses that are transmitted to the brain via the ampullary nerve branches. These impulses provide the brain with information about the direction and speed of head movements. When the head rotates, the inertia of the endolymph within the ducts causes it to move at a different speed than the ducts themselves, resulting in the deflection of the cupula. This deflection bends the hair cells within the crista ampullaris. As these hair cells bend, they generate nerve impulses that are transmitted to the brain via the ampullary nerve branches. These impulses provide the brain with information about the direction and speed of head movements. The semicircular ducts, with their membranous ampullae and the crista ampullaris, enable the precise detection of head rotations, contributing significantly to our ability to navigate and interact with our environment seamlessly. The cochlear duct, also known as the scala media, is a crucial component of the membranous labyrinth within the inner ear. It is a fluid-filled cavity that contains endolymph, a potassium-rich fluid crucial for auditory transduction. Functionally, the cochlear duct acts as a divider within the cochlea, segmenting the surrounding bony labyrinth into two separate chambers filled with pyrolymph, the scala vestibuli above and the scala tympani below. This division is essential for the proper transmission and modulation of sound waves within the cochlea. 
the separation between the cochlear duct and the scala vestibuli is maintained by Reissner's membrane, a thin, delicate structure that forms the roof of the cochlear duct. This membrane is critical in maintaining the distinct ionic composition of the endolymph and pyrolymph, which is vital for the function of the sensory cells within the cochlea. Within the cochlear duct lies the organ of corti, the sensory organ responsible for converting mechanical sound vibrations into electrical impulses. This organ contains rows of hair cells that are stimulated by the movement of the basilar membrane, a result of sound wave-induced pressure differences between the pyrolymph and endolymph. Structurally, the cochlear duct is triangular in shape, featuring three distinct walls, the lateral wall, the roof or superior wall, and the floor or inferior wall. The lateral wall is adjacent to the scala tympani and contains the stria vascularis, which plays a crucial role in maintaining the ionic balance of the endolymph. The roof, formed by Reissner's membrane, separates the cochlear duct from the scala vestibuli, while the floor, formed by the basilar membrane, supports the organ of corti and separates the cochlear duct from the scala tympani. The organ of corti, or the spiral organ, stands as the primary sensory organ responsible for hearing, nestled within the cochlear duct in the inner ear. This remarkable organ is situated on the basilar membrane and is characterized by its highly specialized epithelial structures, which play a crucial role in auditory transduction. Central to the functionality of the organ of corti is a strip of sensory epithelium consisting of hair cells. These hair cells, named for their hair-like cilia protruding from their surface, serve as the sensory receptors of the inner ear. They are the cornerstone of the hearing process, responsible for converting sound vibrations into electrical signals that the brain can interpret as sound. Within the organ of corti, there are two distinct types of hair cells, inner hair cells and outer hair cells. Each type has a specific role in hearing. The inner hair cells are primarily responsible for detecting sound vibrations and converting them into nerve signals. These cells are fewer in number but are critically involved in the sensory transduction process, providing the primary input to the auditory nerve fibers. In contrast, the outer hair cells are more numerous and serve a different purpose. They act as mechanical amplifiers, enhancing the movement of the basilar membrane in response to sound. By altering their length in response to sound vibrations, outer hair cells amplify low-level sounds and improve the precision of the cochlea's frequency selective filtering. This action is essential for the ability to hear soft sounds and for the fine-tuning of frequency discrimination, contributing to the clarity of sound perception. Endolymph and pyrolymph are two distinct, colorless fluids that play critical roles in the functioning of the inner ear. These fluids differ not only in their location within the ear, but also in their chemical composition, and both are essential for the processes of hearing and balance. Endolymph is the fluid that fills all the cavities of the membranous labyrinth. This includes the cochlear duct within the cochlea, the utricle and saccule located in the vestibule, and the semicircular ducts. The unique ionic composition of endolymph, particularly its high potassium and low sodium content, is crucial for the functioning of the hair cells in the sensory organs of the inner ear. When sound vibrations or head movements cause the endolymph to move, it stimulates the hair cells in the cochlear duct and the vestibular apparatus, initiating the transduction of these mechanical stimuli into electrical signals. Pyrolymph, in contrast, separates the membranous labyrinth from the bony labyrinth. It fills the scala vestibuli and scala tympani in the cochlea and the space surrounding the vestibule and semicircular canals. The ionic composition of pyrolymph is more akin to cerebrospinal fluid, with lower potassium and higher sodium concentrations compared to endolymph. This difference in composition is important for creating the electrochemical environment necessary for the transduction process in the inner ear. Pyrolymph acts as a cushioning fluid, protecting the delicate structures of the membranous labyrinth and facilitating the transmission of sound vibrations from the middle ear to the cochlea. The movement of these fluids in response to sound waves or head movements is what enables us to hear and maintain our balance. The internal auditory canal, also known as the internal auditory meatus. This cylindrical, bony canal acts as a conduit between the inner ear and the brain, facilitating the passage of crucial neurovascular structures. Running forward and laterally from the inner ear towards the brain, the internal auditory canal features two primary openings. The first is the porous acousticus internus, located on the brain side of the canal. This opening is a key landmark as it marks the entrance of the canal at the brainstem. 
the fundus of the internal auditory canal, situated deeper within the temporal bone, is closer to the inner ear structures and serves as the endpoint of the canal within the temporal bone. Conceptually, the fundus of the internal auditory canal is divided into four quadrants, each serving as a passage for different neural components. The anterior superior quadrant is designated for the facial nerve. The anterior inferior quadrant contains the cochlear nerve, a part of the vestibulocochlear nerve, which is responsible for transmitting sound and auditory information from the cochlea of the inner ear to the brain. In the posterior superior quadrant, the canal houses the superior division of the vestibular nerve. This division is integral to the body's sense of balance, conveying information about the head's position in space. Finally, the posterior inferior quadrant contains the inferior division of the vestibular nerve, which, like its superior counterpart, plays a crucial role in balance and spatial orientation. The inner ear receives its blood supply and drainage through a specialized vascular system. Understanding the blood and lymphatic circulation within the inner ear is essential to comprehend how this organ maintains its functions and health. The arterial supply to the inner ear primarily comes from the labyrinthine artery, a small but critical vessel that branches off from either the basilar or anterior inferior cerebellar artery. The labyrinthine artery further subdivides into two main branches, the cochlear branch and the vestibular branches. The cochlear branch specifically supplies blood to the cochlea, ensuring the nourishment of the sensory cells responsible for hearing. The vestibular branches, on the other hand, supply blood to the vestibule and semicircular canals, crucial for the vestibular system that governs balance and spatial orientation. Venous drainage of the inner ear is primarily handled by the internal auditory vein and the labyrinthine vein. The internal auditory vein is responsible for draining the cochlea and vestibule. This vein typically leads to the labyrinthine vein, which then drains into the inferior petrosal sinus, a major venous channel situated within the temporal bone. Lymphatic drainage in the inner ear is facilitated by the endolymphatic sac and duct. The endolymphatic sac, located in the dura mater near the posterior surface of the temporal bone, plays a significant role in regulating the volume and pressure of endolymph within the membranous labyrinth. The pyrolymphatic space, another crucial component of inner ear fluid dynamics, is connected to the cerebrospinal fluid system via the cochlear aqueduct. This connection allows for the exchange and regulation of fluid between the inner ear and the central nervous system. The nerve supply to the inner ear is primarily through the vestibulocochlear nerve, also known as cranial nerve 8. This nerve is critically important for the functions of hearing and balance, and it is bifurcated into two distinct components, the vestibular nerve and the cochlear nerve, each serving different aspects of inner ear function. The vestibular nerve is responsible for innervating the vestibular system, which includes the semicircular canals, utricle, and saccule. This part of the nerve is essential for maintaining equilibrium and spatial orientation. The sensory receptors in the vestibular apparatus detect changes in head position and motion, and the vestibular nerve transmits this information to the brain. This transmission allows the brain to interpret and respond to changes in balance and orientation, coordinating movements and posture. The cochlear nerve, on the other hand, innervates the cochlea, the organ responsible for hearing. Inside the cochlea, hair cells of the organ of corti convert sound vibrations into electrical signals. The cochlear nerve carries these signals from the cochlea to the auditory cortex of the brain. This process enables the perception of sound, including recognizing different pitches and volumes, and discerning the direction from which a sound originates. Both components of the vestibulocochlear nerve are essential for the functions they serve. In conclusion, the inner ear, nestled in the innermost part of the ear, is an anatomical and functional marvel, playing a critical role in two of our most essential senses, hearing and balance. This complex organ houses the vestibulocochlear organs, which are integral to our ability to perceive sound and maintain equilibrium. At the heart of auditory function within the inner ear is the cochlea. This snail-shaped structure is key in converting sound vibrations into electrical signals. These signals are then transmitted to the brain, allowing for auditory perception. Central to this process is the organ of corti, located within the cochlear duct. It contains specialized hair cells that respond to sound waves by converting them into neural impulses. The vestibular apparatus of the inner ear, consisting of the semicircular canals, utricle, and saccule, is equally significant. It is primarily responsible for maintaining balance and spatial orientation. 
The semicircular canals, in particular, are adept at detecting rotational movements of the head, while the utricle and saccule sense linear movements and the position of the head relative to gravity. The movement of endolymph within these structures stimulates sensory receptors, sending signals to the brain that help regulate our balance and spatial awareness. Disorders affecting the inner ear, such as sensory neural hearing loss, vertigo, and tinnitus, can have a profound impact on an individual's quality of life. These conditions can affect both hearing and balance, leading to significant challenges in daily activities and overall well-being.